Cornboy, Cornboy, this is Mark from Five Alive. Can we have an interview? The heck, get away from me. No, What's wrong with you guys? Just get the... We are Five Alive. I'm Bobby T. I'm Cornboy with Four and, Horsemen Toy Design. And today we are at the Pompton Queen Diner. I had to look over at the sign because it's just a crazy name, but dude, this place was awesome. Thanks. That was a pretty I, serious burger. Yeah, um, we've been coming here for years. My kids turned me on to it. They always come here like after partying around midnight or so, and they turned me on to it, and we come here all the time. Any any Sunday that we're out and about wanting to get food, Pomp and Queen's a place to go. We, uh, I guess, so we did the other version of partying. We went to a toy convention, <laughs> and then we came to eat some disco fries. The polar opposite Just of, the of opposite partying. of partying. Right. So, um, as everybody knows here, we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks. We do have Cornboy here, and we're going to ask him some questions. We've had a few questions coming in from our fans on the internet, uh, through Facebook, Twitter, and all the different outlets. Mm -hmm. um, the first question that they have comes actually from Glios. Okay. And they're asking about your Power Lords line and what's going on. Well, right now we're getting ready to do a pre-order for the Power Lords uh, coming up. The I believe it's going to start on the 8th of September. Um, yeah, 8th or 9th, sometime around there. Look on sourcehorseman.com for that info. <laughs> Source but, <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll link to that so everybody okay, cool. can get it. Um, but people have been asking, are these still going to be Glyos compatible? Because the previous Power Lords that really, we released were Glyos compatible. Um, it's kind of up in the air. Chances are it won't be this time. But um, what's going on with it is that uh, we've moved the production of these Glyos figures to another factory, the same factory that's doing our Mythic Legions action figures. Um, they gave us a quote, the price was fantastic on the production, and we look, saw a couple of the samples they did, and it's just spectacular work, and this factory constantly does unbelievable and spectacular work for us, so we're going to be doing those through there. The problem with that is, is that the discs for like the shoulder joints and stuff are still at the old factory. And that's gonna be what the main thing we're looking for in Glios is that joint compatibility. Right, the joint compatibility. And there are some other uh, lines that are Glios compatible that are using those joints that we created in their lines. Mm -hmm. those, um, those lines are, let's see, Knights of the Slice. I think they might use Glio, them. Uh, the Glios, obviously. Right. Uh, uh, do Skeleton Warriors use I, it? Skeleton Warriors might use some. I'm not sure exactly which ones use them, but there's a few other lines that use those discs. And we don't want to take those discs from that factory to this new factory and, you know, leave those guys in a lurch and them not have those discs to be able to be used again. You know, we don't want to, you know, we, we're kind of thinking about these other companies that do this, this kind of work and, and the fans and stuff. So we can always, if we decide, if we get the blessing from Matt, who owns Glios, to go ahead and use the Glios system again, or if we decide it's something that we really don't need in these figures, we may or may not use it. It's still kind of up in the air. We're, we're working on that right now to figure well, out what's going to happen. We had it. mentioned earlier that you have Matt Dowdy on your side. Yeah. And when you've got the creator on your side, anything <laughs> yes, can be done. <laughs> yeah, he can, um, he can figure out how to do anything. I remember, having, true. I remember having a conversation with him once about uh, photos, taking photos. This is early on in Glios. Uh -huh. And um, I said, oh, yeah, man, just hit the macros button on your, your camera. It's, you know, this is, it's, it's almost on every camera now. Right. And he goes, Bob, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, well, what's going on? And he explains it to me that he has, he doesn't have the money to get another camera. At the time, he's like, I, don't, I want to get another camera just for pictures right. when I can take pictures without a camera and I'd rather make more toys. And this guy, he seriously pulled out for a fisheye lens, the oldest pair of like old lady glasses I've ever seen. <laughs> and he put them on the front of the camera. I am not and surprised. to make the starlight in the back, yeah. he took a black piece of paper and a, um, what are the airsoft guns? And just went pop, 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 <laughs> and put it behind a light or put it in front of a light, mm -hmm. threw the figures in front of it. That Here comes your fisheye lens. And it was the most amazing picture. And I'm going, I it just saw this guy. Sense. This is construction paper, uh, plastic bullets. <laughs> we have tried all different kinds of lighting and stuff when we're photographing our figures just for records at the studio. And we are so jealous of the pictures that Matt. And he's doing Takes it. Takes with that Glio stuff. He's with, a caveman. the way he's doing it. It's insane. I, we're so jealous of it. Like necessity. We want him to come to our studio and take yeah. all of our photos. Please, Matt, start taking more photos. <laughs> dude. You're pretty awesome. So um, so on the show, every week, we do um, kind of the same questions. They are, what are you listening to? What are you playing? What are you watching? And what are you reading? So what are you reading? Uh, right now, what I'm reading, I'm, I'm going back and reading all the old uh, Hellboy graphic novels. I've Excellent. I've got all of them that they released. At least the ones that Mike M Mignola was directly involved in. Either he wrote 
or preferably wrote Andrew. Mm -hmm. If there's another artist on it, as long as they're kind of aping Mignola's style, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I, I gotta be in the neighborhood. The, I, I'm yeah. with you. I I'm prefer the Mignola that. completely. I mean, he was uh, when I was going to the Kubert School. Um, those books were a huge influence on me. They really influenced the direction that I wanted to take with uh, my art style, my career, and everything. So, um, so with right that, now, there's I haven't been to the comic book sh shop in the last probably three months or so because of Comic Con and our recent um, Kickstarter mm. that we did. So I'm just kind of going back and rereading those. I'm also like watching stuff. I'm going back and rewatching Breaking Bad. I guess I'm kind of, kind of in a mode of going back and <laughs> we were just talking about that that things. we watch things yeah. and watch them and read them and read them and. Yeah, Breaking Bad's a good one. Yeah, I actually got to watch it back myself because when I had watched Breaking Bad, mm -hmm. uh, at the time I was working at a sign shop and I would keep it on in the background, I'd mostly listen to it. Yeah. So the only times I'd actually look at the screen was when there'd be silence for more than 30 seconds <laughs> because I know there's some kind of weird meth-induced tension yep. that people are staring at each other or something's bad happening. Like right. someone's getting shoved in a barrel or yeah, something. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough show to watch while you're working because it really needs to be watched. Yeah. You can listen to it and it's a great show, but there's so much that no, goes there, on. There's a lot on there. the face yeah. that happens with yep. that. And it's a big Cranston thing. So uh, so we got watching, reading. What are you listening to? My go-to is Break always, down. yeah, well, it's, it's old <laughs> stuff. And nothing, nothing really new. Like I'm open to just about anything mm -hmm. musically, but... Um, Except for country. Sorry if there's any country fans. I can't deal with country. But just really? about everything else I, I See, it's funny because I listen to bluegrass. Really? Oh, love I love bluegrass. bluegrass. I grew up on bluegrass. So mm. I, but I don't consider that country. That's not country. That's a completely yeah, different genre. Else. Bluegrass you're is right. just... And those, those... I mean, anybody who doesn't listen to bluegrass, you don't know what you're missing. Because those mu musicians in bluegrass music are absolutely amazing. Just They're beyond incredible. the pale. Yeah. They really are. But um, I, I always go back to my stand-ins uh, a, a tool. Um, a perfect circle. Those are like that. Toadies, oh. uh, Burden Brothers, all that. So stuff. man of the '90s. Yes, that's yeah. well. You're, you're speaking our language. Yeah. So, which actually, it's funny you say that. We're doing currently a uh, Martin and I are doing a year by year synopsis review of um, the '80s, and we're we're talking about movies, music, toys, wrestling, all the things that happened within the years to figure out whether it rocked or it sucked. Because we can't figure out if the 80s sucked or not. Like, it brought right. us a lot, but you know what? It also brought us Olivia Newton-John. So, <laughs> so we got to kind of pump it? the brakes <laughs> a little bit. So, oh, she is the scourge of like the early 80s we've discovered. Yeah. So um, we're going to move on into the 90s. And I'm currently debating for the 80s, and he's against the 80s. I am going to flip it. You're going to flip I'm it? I'm going to flip against the 90s. Although there is a couple years in the That's 90s where I'm yeah. just going to have to go, sorry, 90s, uh, Tool is a little too good for yeah, you. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, that should have been moved to another decade. So, <laughs> so we're, uh, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. We're going to do a big blow-off live episode for uh, like a That'll finale of all nine to kind of look at it from a longer view yeah. and instead of year by year. Because year by year you find out that the, uh, the Village People made a rated G movie where you see a penis. Wow. Oh, there's boobs too. Oh yes, you know uh, what was it? Can't stop the music. Can't stop the music. Huh. They hang dog in a Gene rated movie. Yes, wow. there's there's wow. male nudity. And it's it insane. Now I have to watch so that. That's two things that with Steve eyes. Gutenberg. Wow. So um, is and, it Steve Gutenberg's dong though? Uh, no, it would take up the whole screen from what I understand. I've heard <laughs> stories. I've heard. I've heard stories. The Goot's yeah. got uh, he's got the meat. So um, yeah, so we've been doing these, and uh, we're gonna go into the '90s and. The thing is, 90s is going to kill me because I love the toys of the 90s. Yes. So I'm going to probably crap on some of the music and then go, okay, but okay, for every Barbie girl we have, we did get the first series of Spawn. So, so at the <laughs> end of your debate between good and bad with the 80s mm -hmm. and with the 90s, is there going to be, at the end, you're going to say, come to a general consensus? We're going to, yeah, we're going to have to. Decide well, year by and year. Decide. Yes, it sucked. Or okay, yes, it so was awesome. right now we you, you're not going to filmed... fall somewhere in the middle and cheese out, right? No, no, okay, no. Good. Well, see now, there, there, it's interesting how this might work out because we still don't know. We're right. we're going year by year. So, um, for instance, eighty was Martin, eighty one was decidedly me because eighty one was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is for uh, for looking at nineteen eighty, you had uh, Empire Strikes Back. But you also had the the first appearance of the Let's Get Physical video by Olivia Newton John. Yeah. And you have like a whole bunch of other garbage that came out that can't stop the music. And you go, okay, Empire was good, but that stuff was so bad. Like, yeah. how did that happen? Right. So he got the win for that one. And as we go on, there's the years with Blade Runner and Indiana Jones. And so it makes it hard to kind of fight it. Yeah. Um, right now, our current score, I believe we're up to 1980. 80, right. We're at uh, 85. And. 
the current score is two for me, two for Martin, and two were a draw. It had to be a push. Uh, good can't, movies, but can't bad. Be draw. I'm so, be so no, well, it can't because there's tech, there's nine years. Okay. Oh no, there would be ten because eighty Thank counts you. as a year. So uh, right now, let's see, we got 86, 87, 88, 88. We got four years left to see really what happens here. So you, hair fingers metal, crossed. Uh, hair metals. My, my, yeah, hair, hair metals me. is gonna might take me down. I was so. in I was in hair metal band, so you got to give that a thumbs up. Man. <laughs> All right. Well, then I, I think we need to find pictures of this hair metal band and put them on the episode. I, I probably so. have an old. Uh, like crappy flyer or something I can send you guys. <laughs> that would be so amazing. <laughs> I'll see if I can dig so, it out. Uh, let's see. The name of that hair metal band Play. is Meth Related Tension. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yes. All right, we talked about right, this talked earlier. We talked about this a little earlier. I was mentioning Hellboy a few minutes ago. Yep. And, uh, How Vigola was a huge influence. He was a huge influence on, in, influence on me. And they had asked, you know, had you guys ever worked on a Hellboy figure or whatever? And we actually did. Um, it wasn't official. What it was was we were working at McFarland Toys that t at that time, and Todd was. No, you say we? Do you mean you and the myself other three guys, and, and the other other guys who were the four horsemen? Okay. Eric Treadaway, Jim Preziosi, and um, he had done uh, Danger Girl figures, which were by J. Scott Campbell. He'd done the Marv oh, figure, which is by yeah, which was. Uh, uh, Marv from Sin City, mm -hmm. and um, there was a couple others that they did. Oh, Wetworks. Did Wetworks stuff? They Wolf did. Uh, they did Witchblade. Witchblade, right? Yeah. Uh, wait, no, they didn't do Witchblade. No, they didn't. No, no, you're thinking of wet. Yeah. There was Wetworks. Wetworks, they did, but they did do Wetworks. Oh, Youngblood. There you go. Yeah, yeah. and then, but they were doing like different figures and lines, and some some were just like standalone figures, like Marv, from other creators, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we decided, Eric and I are both huge uh, Hellboy fans, so we decided to create a Hellboy prototype figure. So there is actually a Hellboy prototype action figure that we sculpted, molded, and cast. I don't think we painted. I think it was just a, a gray casting that we took to Comic-Con and showed it to Mike Mignola. We might have presented that. We might have given that version to him. And he was really into it. He liked it. And we were saying, okay, maybe we can talk about this. but. Right after that, I think Todd had stopped, Todd McFarlane mm -hmm. of McFarlane Toys, had stopped um, doing toys for, for other people. So it just kind of never happened. Yeah. So. Huh, that's that, too it bad. almost happened. So where, where exactly can I find this prototype? And is there alarm around it? There may, <laughs> they may be in our studio. I know we still have molds. I don't know if we have any extra castings of it. I don't hey, know uh, Martin, do you still have that castings. black hockey mask, the black I mask and all the black gear? Tools. We're good to go. We're good. Grappling hook. <laughs> yeah. It's going to, you got to see us our go up like a, a mountain. Blocks, so. <laughs> All right, well, be tough. we go up a mountain like two fat dudes go up a mountain. <laughs> I, I can just imagine us like trying to scale the wall like we're Batman and Robin. <laughs> Except instead of uh, our capes, it's just cheeseburgers falling out of our pockets. <laughs> oh boy, we have problems. <laughs> so, is there anything you're looking forward to? As far as anything. Well, I still, I, this is blasphemy. I still haven't seen Wonder Woman. I still haven't seen Spider Man. Uh, I I saw, I'm saw, with you, brother. Saw Baby Driver. Freaking amazing. Oh no, Has I anybody seen, seen it? No, we, seen we've it been yet. talking it's about so wanting sad. to see it. I, I think it's about to go out of the theater. Yeah, and and yeah. if you have not seen it, take a moment and go see that movie. You will be blown away. It's amazing from start to finish. From the first couple of minutes all the way through the end of the movie, it's amazing. So I'm hearing the same thing and about Atomic Blonde. I've heard that too. I that it that. is like, oh, Chris is giving the thumbs up over it? there. Oh my dude. gosh. By the way, first time I looked at great. Chris's shirt today, pretty awesome shirt, dude. Oh, that's a great man, shirt. Man shirt. Yeah, I didn't even, I, I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. And I, I just got a good look at it. Awesome. So, um. I can, I cannot. Oh, we got Martin talking off it. I cannot recommend Wonder Woman enough. Yeah. Um, and this is from a person who I've generally hates previous. everything DC, uh, uh, and not, and not just like hate. DC is its own place. Is, yeah. is yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman was just everything was pitch perfect. I, I loved every second of it. The Superman movie I didn't like. The the um, just or not just League. Batman, Batman Superman. versus Superman. Parts of it I thought were okay. General but consensus. But the first half yeah. of it was a nightmare. Yeah. I could. I my wife was like, "Can we leave?" It was explained here? to me as I didn't even I haven't even seen Batman Super Superman yet because it was explained to me in the in the easiest way possible. I said, is it good? And my friend Josh went, it's a mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, I want nothing to do yeah. with that. We're good. Next. And then Suicide Squad, <clears throat> Harley Quinn, amazing. She was awesome in it. The Joker, I thought was, I thought uh, he did a fantastic job of playing the Joker. I just didn't like 
the the grill. I didn't like the tattoos on yeah. the face and everything, but there's a couple of scenes in there where he kind of smiles and then his smile kind of goes away, but his mouth still open because so it looks yeah the, like he, a skull like he does creep premise. out on you yeah scary as heck and I just I, I so, loved his portrayal, but the rest of the movie I didn't really care for. So as far as Wonder Woman goes. I have not been in any kind of hurry to see it, even though everybody tells me you got to see it. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, I think for me, and, and my reason for not really rushing out to go see it is because I think DC is its own worst enemy. They cannot make a good Batman Superman movie. How can't you do that? Right. Meanwhile, you've got uh, Guardians of the Galaxy throwing Marvel at the end of Guardians credits, throwing in uh, Howard the Duck, Howard and the we Duck. are all shitting our pants for Howard the Duck. Yeah, and yeah. then you remind yourself, wait, this is Howard the Duck we're talking yeah. about here. And then you go, oh, yeah, so and you know it's uh, it's just showing, and I, I really I've said repeatedly that them Marvel doing that with Howard the Duck was something of a victory lap, and then yeah. spiking the ball directly on DC <laughs> yeah. space to go yeah. look what they did for Howard the Duck, and look what you can't do with Superman. Yeah. Uh, so Marvel has a black, oh oh wait Martin's got talking on the microphone. Marvel has a Black Panther movie that is going to right. be critically acclaimed. Yeah, this is and they can't pull a Superman. You think movie it's going to be critically acclaimed? I think it's gonna, I really uh, hope so. It's it going to be good. Amazing it's so it's going to be amazing. And they're um, doing it, or they're making all the right choices as far as uh, director, writer. Yeah. One casting I didn't see for that film. Do we know if Storm is going to be in it, or yeah. if she's going I to be know. cast she even is, as her uh, or? Fox owns her rights. Good luck getting it. Even uh, the real name, even her real. Oh, that Aurora sucks. Monroe. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes they know they get away with that. Yeah, like they yeah, use a name, Fox, not not. Fox and Marvel don't play well very, uh, very well together. In the one thing that I'm worried about with that movie is they they got Andy Serkis to play Ulysses Claw, which is Claw, mm-hmm. Claw, an awesome, fantastic four villain. Yeah. But <laughs> and I don't think that it's going to be like yeah, the yeah, Claw I that I want to yeah, see. Yeah, I don't you think they you want him with and, the, the thing yeah, on the hand and the red with, with the, the ugly the... red and purple oh, costume so with all the good. zigzags all what over we... and the big metal hand. I want to see that. It was one of the most common happen. in the original Hero Clicks. It was like one of the most common ones. I had an army of Claw. I just keep <laughs> throwing them out there. I love that character. Oh yeah, he's so great. So hokey and awesome. So uh, all right, so it's anything else you're looking forward to? It's a sound thing. It's a it's a sound. Yeah, it's like a speaker. You know what it is. It's, we just recently saw wrestling last week, and uh, it was uh, independent wrestling in um, Muzzy Field in Bristol, Connecticut. Yeah. And the audio was being piped through turn-of-the-century loudspeakers. Wow. So what's funny is I have a video, and I, I might have to splicey splice this one in so everyone can see this. The guy in the sound booth has so his headphones sound on. like this? Dude, I wish it sounded oh. like that. This was um, Jim Carrey's The Most Annoying noise in the world oh, yeah. fed through a megaphone oh, from 85 yeah. years ago oh, and now no. what's funny is the guy in the booth clearly has all the real music and what everyone's saying he's got the headphones on and there's this big fat dude he's getting down in the booth like there, there's an entrance coming out and he's like hey he's got the headphones on and everyone in the crowd's just like oh, stands, we've got no. blood running down our yeah <laughs> and i just finally i'm like i'm looking i start waving and he's not even looking i was like i'm just gonna film this clown like wow so yeah you got to see this dude get down but the audio yeah. is full on <laughs> No. And if you like plug your if your your ears loud or like hard enough, you'd be yeah. able to hear like oh there's music under that. Okay, oh, I see no. what's going on. We got that's to see hacksaw Jim sad. Duggan came oh, out. Oh, that's with cool. The, did the whole flag nice. work and all that? Um, I do have a question for you regarding. Oh, all right, your jump in. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get uh, Chris in here. New face. Yeah. So uh, we just went to the you know Wayne um, the Wayne New Jersey toy, toy uh, to toy show. Yeah, exactly. And I wanted to ask you uh, what it's like seeing your own figures on like people collecting them and selling them what's what's that like because we saw three or four boots that had those master or masters of the universe yeah. uh figures that uh your your company made so yeah. how do you how do you feel about that well here's the thing i'm a big geek i think everybody who who's ever seen me in any kind of interviews or talked to me knows that and i've collected action figures and toys and everything all my life i've mm-hmm. always been a big nerd and the one dream that you can have when you're creating anything is that anybody else on the planet likes it at all. Yeah. And then to go to a toy show and see stuff that people really like, that, you're, they're in, that you've created, mm-hmm. that they're really into, and then people are selling it for even more money than it originally went for, it kind of gives me a bad feeling because I'm a nerd and a geek and I don't want them to sell my toys that I want everybody to have for more than they're worth, but it gives yeah. me a good feeling too because people want it that badly yeah. that it actually goes up in value quickly. That's... I mean, I don't know. It's 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 a blessing even getting to be in the toy industry and getting into, you know, 
do something that I love for a living and people actually pay me to do it. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm kind of a common schmo, so I, I work retail and, you know, I have to deal with the masses and stuff like that. So I never get to really meet people who are, um, you know, I, I guess I would say that important in, in the toy industry. So it was really cool for me to see you interacting with fans Dude, I've been in the industry for years, yeah, you dick. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I haven't, I haven't seen you, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, dealing with these, you know, with, with people like that. So I thought it was really cool, uh, you know, that that one that one booth that we went to when you were trying to buy this figure, and the guy's like, no, no, oh, yeah. you know, and he, and he, he wants you know to, what? he wants to give it to you for free. You're like, dude, I want I want wait, to support no, wait, you. No, no, <laughs> wait, but that was a guy that I've known for years. Uh, okay, He's okay, a buddy. It okay. Wasn't just like some guy who goes. Oh my God, oh, that's Corn Boy. It wasn't okay. that kind I see, of thing. I didn't trust know that. Me. I thought I thought no, he was no, someone that. No, no, it wasn't that. that. No, okay, it was a guy okay. I've known for a long time, and but we've been we've that's been That's still friends. pretty cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we ran into Randy from NECA at the show. He yep. was wandering around with his family, so that was kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, it was really cool of him to say, you know, here, you know, just take it. Yeah. I, was like, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. Uh, I do have one last question for you uh, regarding the the Masters of the Universe line. Uh, uh -huh. Since you worked on that, which one uh, is your favorite? That's a hard decision. I mean, from the old 2000X line that we did, it was absolutely trap jaw because I, I built that big, gigantic, mechanical, crazy Frankensteinish arm that he had. Mm -hmm. And it, that was all just hand turned. Like, it, there's nothing computer graphics or anything. That was all just hand done, sculpted, nice. and, and fabricated parts. I love that. So I kind of like the trap jaw from the Masters of the Universe Classics line, mm -hmm. too, because, I, you know, I built that arm as well and it kind of. It's a kind of a reminder of what I did there, but my all-time favorite Masters of the Universe characters are always the guys who you would see as like the big, beefy, massive guys, mm -hmm. like Beast Man, Clawful, those kind of guys. Those are all my favorite kind of guys, and nice. the bad guys, never the good guys. Yeah, well, the bad guys, because the bad we guys are always fun. Yeah, right? well, we were talking about that on the show uh, a few weeks ago. The the shows revolve around the bad guys, like yeah. GI Joe. It's it's Cobra trying to take over the world and their master plan, and then in the last ten minutes, GI Joe foils yeah, it. Spoil sports yeah, coming yeah, exactly. in and ruining all the fun. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. That's what good guys are. They're a bunch of spoil sports. That don't have a good, don't have, have a good time. Don't forget, you gotta have a bad guy, or you need a good guy to have a bad yeah. guy. As Stan Lee always right. says, Doctor Doom wants to rule the world. How do we know he wouldn't be better at it? Yeah. You never know. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's all I. Well, so yeah, somebody would, <laughs> some people would agree that that yeah that, that with presidents that we've had that yeah, yeah he might actually do a better job. Um, so uh, a couple Hi. questions. How are you doing? <laughs> um, a couple questions. Uh, hey, you said uh, you said yeah, um, I threw mine away three years ago. <laughs> uh, you said you were uh, working on some DC Universe stuff and you were looking forward to the Vixen coming out and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anything like that? Was there is, is there anything that you haven't worked on yet that you really that just want to get That actually wasn't on camera because we talked about you're that right, earlier. You're right. Our sound was screwed up. Right? Yeah, we, this is the second time we're recording this. Yeah. Kind of. Behind the scenes. Oh yeah. Sorry. We're behind breaking the, the fourth yeah. wall. Sorry to break the fourth <laughs> wall. I didn't mean to Bobby do that. T, the T stands for technical. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. The Vixen that we did for the upcoming DC Universe uh, multiverse line for Mattel is probably my favorite in the line because it's just it's just such a beautiful action figure. And, but then second is that uh, Gotham by Gaslight Batman. Not just yeah. because it's a Mike Mignola uh, created figure for, mm -hmm. for DC, but also because um, we got to take that figure. And even though I really wanted to push it and make it really styled like Mike Mignola's style, it needs to fit within the context of the DC multiverse. So you can put it with other characters. So we took some of his his cues like some of the folds and stuff and they're in there mm -hmm. the folds in the clothing and everything but we didn't go quite as far as we could have with that figure but it's still it's a that's a beautiful standout figure in that way too and i'm sorry you had another question no that's no it. no uh, is there anything that you uh that you haven't worked on yet that you really just i mean you did mention the hellboy that you know uh, you did get a chance to do a prototype of that but is there you, anything that you mean just from the dc stuff or anything anything, anything. Yeah. that's another thing we talked about earlier art adams is since he did, like, I think uh, Long Shot was yep. the first thing I saw him do. And then he did some stuff in X-Men, like the baby X-Men yep. and stuff. I've always been a huge fan of Art Adams. And I would love to be able to do Monkey Man and O'Brien. The one that was done by, uh, was it Toy Biz? Toy Biz years ago. It was believe, great, and I yeah, have those. Yeah, I believe yeah. it was Toy Biz, yeah. And I would love to get the chance for us to go back and just that do that ourselves independently and really just let have Art come in and do some, like, new designs exactly. and everything. Exactly, yeah. 
Right. Now, there's some other background characters in that book that were amazing, too. There's a couple of more giant gorilla guys. There's a gorilla robot thing that was never done. Oh, my God, I'd love to do that line. Judging by... Uh, judging Only for by... myself, though, because <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, if it would be judging financially by, yeah. feasible. But uh, judging by some of, the, uh, some of the stuff you worked on and, uh, you know, obviously what you're... Uh, what you're uh, looking towards making it seems like the big dudes the uh, big hulking dudes those are the guys you, you like to make yeah for some reason i just like the i guess because i'm a big fat beefy <laughs> dude i like the big guys that are wider than they all are tall the thing is my favorite comic book character of all time yeah well. any if you know one of my biggest biggest issues in the toy industry is there has never been a thing action figure done yet that i thought that's the one except for the one that Eric Treadaway sculpted me for Christmas a few years oh, ago. <laughs> and it's like... It's a one of a kind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a one of a kind. There's actually three of them. There's um, one that's just a gray mm -hmm. tooling pattern, and then Eric has one that's painted, and I have one that's painted. And it doesn't have any articulation from the waist down yet, just because we knew it wasn't ever going to go into production, or at least as Chances far as we know. Work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it has ball joint shoulders. It has... Uh, I think it's... Yeah, it's ball, ball joint elbows. It has articulated... Um, swivel wrist and it has a ball and socket head and it's very john byrne style which that's if that's, it's not kirby john byrne is and john byrne aping kirby you know like yeah exactly uh, inspired by kirby that's my thing and he did a, an amazing job on it and we're just one of these days maybe we'll be able to get yeah. a chance to release that and i want to do a whole wave of the fantastic four yeah. myself just us doing we've done some work for toy biz with fantastic four we did a a Mr. Fantastic. We did a Thing figure, but it was based on the Mike a Mike Waringo mm -hmm. thing for Toy Biz, and we did a Torch figure, and we did a we did a couple of animated style uh, Fantastic Four figures for them that I don't think ever came out. But I just want us to be able to Four Horsemen versions of Fantastic Four. That would be like my dream come true if we so could do that. So you heard wave. it, Marvel. Yeah. The man wants to do it. We do. <laughs> I can't say that we would do it for free. <laughs> Maybe a little cut of the pie or something. But Get yeah, we'd done. love to do that. Yeah, and that would sell. I uh, I think honestly, the Fantastic the 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 state of the Fantastic Four is in per right now is just mm. one of the saddest things ever. Tragic. The the what should be the flagship of that company. Yeah. And just. Uh, I agree. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think uh, I think we're done. Unless Bob, you have right, something. Come on. No, no. Oh, okay. Am I being knocked out? You're being you're being kicked <laughs> out of here. So now back to things. So um, wow, we got a lot of information here from you. Yeah, I think fine. it's been a pretty good day here so far. Me too. No. Uh, what'd you end up picking up at gorgeous day? What'd you end up picking up at the con? Uh, we showed them on on camera earlier. I don't know if that's going to be before or after this, but it was. Um, I got uh, from Planet of the Apes mm -hmm. uh, the the line that NECA did um, from the newer Planet of the Apes movies uh, a couple of years ago. They did a Caesar that has the painted war war paint face. Those, those movies are so amazing. Yeah, I didn't think they, they were going to be and as good as they are. are spectacular too. Phenomenal, those, man. They're, the figures they did are amazing, and I was kind of late to the the game on those, but. Um, I never had picked up the ones with the painted face, the Koba or the uh, mm -hmm. Caesar. Yeah, it's and they got have like that the one hand, there. The white hand over right, the face. Right. Yeah. And it was like ten bucks, and I snagged there you go. it. And there was also a Shin Godzilla, the one that was di designed by Takeda. Yeah, your broken one. Yeah. And it was that the one that I had. It's all broken and beat. Uh, the one that was at the show it was broken. Like just the head popped off, but the package was beat all the crap. I open all my toys anyway. I'm an mm. opener, so. Uh oh. Sorry. Chris. Chris is Sorry Chris, Chris is on the heart. other side right now, just like Jesus. holding his heart. Full like I'm a toy man. I design toys and make toys so they can be played with. I I fully support anybody who wants to buy toys and keep them in the package, you know, because then it's it's like inspiration and it's artwork too, and I'm fine with that. But me myself, I make toys to be played with, mm. and if I can't pull them out of the package, they're just they're just a, a you know, a not on the wall. Yeah, they're nothing to me. So. Um, the package was all destroyed, but I don't care because I'm going to take it out and play with it anyway. Yeah, you take it out, you're probably going to fix any problems that yep. it has. You're about the yep. most uh, skilled person in that, I would think. <laughs> I don't know uh, about the most. You're, you're up there, I I'll tell you what. I do a lot of fixing when, it, when things get broken down at the studio, so yeah. As long I as need you a put toys. The you got to come in, you got to come in so we can hear right. you. As long as you put the proper head on the proper body, <laughs> that is okay. That's what I was thinking about. I was thinking about taking the head that Eric sculpted of the thing and putting it on the Shin Godzilla body. And oh I'll send you pictures God. of it when I do. I think Chris... <laughs> He's having a hard time. Oh, uh, guys, hold on one second. He's set. on the ground. What the hell is that? <laughs> oh, my God. Is that a pair of panties in the tree? I don't know. What the fuck? 
All right, we have a bat. It's hanging over your car. I don't even know. I didn't put that up. What there. in the world is Did that? that fly so, out of my car when I pulled up? I, I don't think so. I think that's been up there for a while. Oh, and wait, there's it's something a bag in it. Or something. There's something hanging in it. <laughs> there's something in that. Okay, that's weirding me out. Well, my car's right here. We <laughs> climb up on top and find I out. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna leave that up there. So uh, uh, swag-wise, I ended up picking up a bunch of stuff like we were saying really earlier on. Um, picked up a piece I've been wanting. It's the Striker Eureka, the Ultimate Edition. This is cool because I'm a I'm a big fan of Pacific Rim. Yeah, well, screw, screw all you guys who hate it, but hold on, um, hold on. Yeah, get into that thing. <laughs> I'm looking directly at Crizzle <laughs> while I do this. He's crying. Don't cry. Uh-oh. You're knocking the, this thing around. What is this? So, uh, yeah, that's our... Uh, knocked our microphone over, but, yeah, this thing is amazing, dude. It's got the it's got rockets. I've never seen these ones in the boxes. There's a lot of extra stuff with this. Um, it's So, it's got the rockets. It's got the blades. It actually has the bomb. It's coming wow. right off the back here. And it, oh, wow. The bomb looks like it fans out almost. Yeah, it does. Oh, geez. As I'm opening it, there's more stuff spilling out. Yeah, it's like, in the back of the package. Oh, this looks like it's more parts for the bomb. Ah, uh, that's the chest. Oh, there it is. Because yeah, the, the chest, chest comes up. There's those yep. volley of, uh, yep. uh, of, of missiles. Wow, dude. Yeah, see? Wow, that chest is cool. chest completely comes out. Um, How much was that? This was 10 bucks. Was that the only one? Yeah. Oh, I think so. Okay. I'll have to call Sam. <laughs> you have to make some calls more. to Sam yeah, on that one. That's pretty so, cool. But yeah, I mean, the, even the back like fully kind of has these little ball joints inside of them. Wow. Wow. I am like super impressed with this. Uh, and then it has the uh, the different parts that go on the back to give it the fins, the booster fins. Is that um, larger than some of the previously released uh, Jaegers or is it know, the same I, scale? I think it it's the like same it scale. I hope so. Um, one of the things, the reason why I really actually wanted this was because uh, it had the regular Striker Eureka. Uh, uh, make sure I'm saying it right. Yeah, Striker Eureka. Uh, and he had fallen off the shelf and shattered into a thousand pieces. Wow. So um, this figure is pretty awesome. He's going Very right nice. into the display. And actually... That's kind of cool nice too. Backdrop. Like that little backdrop to take a couple pictures in. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty sweet. Um, buy ten bucks for ten bucks. A speaking steal. of deal, for another ten bucks, pick this up for my daughter, who, as we all know, is a, a next gen fan. Um, we got ceremonial robes, Picard and um, and Riker. Uh, also, more ceremonial robes for uh, or the the get up for uh, Kirk and Spock, and actually. When I, back when I worked at Art Asylum, I made the figures for this in Mini Mate version, and it's when um, Ambassador Sarah visits for the first oh, time, nice. is when you first see the, these costumes. Uh, and then a Cisco and Kira from Deep Space wow, Nine. Nice. So I got six figures with bases for 10 bucks. Wow, that's, that's a good buy. Now what's funny is going back, uh, these collector series editions. Guys, if it ever says collector's edition, <laughs> no, not a collector's no. edition. Uh, let's see what else. Only the oh. collectors decide what is going to be the collectors. Edition. Exactly. So, uh, Chris and I were talking about these last night on the live show. Uh, these are the Batman series two from the original movie. Nice. So we'll probably open these up on our next it live says show. Cards and sticker, but is there gum in there? They, you know, I don't feel gum, but they're kind of creeping me out. They're they're, they're a little weird. You know, let's open one. Up. We're, we're gonna check one out right now. That opened really too easy. <laughs> don't eat the gum. <laughs> yeah. The gum is mold. Yeah. What's the sticker? Okay, the sticker is not bad. Not bad. To just get the Batman signal. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Uh, these are just old moldy cards, basically. They They're really just, are moldy, too. Ew. Yeah, yeah, what dude. What the heck? This is what I need to go, like, wash I, my hands before yeah. we die, I think. Got my annual dose of penicillin right there. <laughs> wow. Yikes on bikes. Okay, so let's put those in their own uh, biohazard. Let's see. Okay, now this is really funny. I think... <laughs> oh yeah, Grizz is saying, let's go throw them up in that bag. So, um, that's actually what's in that This bag. is actually an astronaut that appeared in uh, Power Rangers in Space. And really? What's actually kind of funny is he's got the removable helmet, one of my favorite features. <laughs> he's just such a goofball. Yeah, like, I, I had to get guy. him. Yeah, he's such a goofy dude. He's Astronaut Bean. I, I think, I can't remember what the name was. Alan Bean. Alan Bean, yep. Oh, wow, this was man. another, another pretty awesome get. Alan, what a goofball. Um, Got an inhuman Does figure. it not do anything? It's just a That's figure. pretty much what he does. Oh, like he's, he's doing it all. I'm not even sure his hands are shaped the right way to hold anything. I don't know. The removal <laughs> helmet's cool. Exactly. That's about... Well, I like the, the Power Ranger stuff. So it's, but, that's... But, 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 but. <laughs> he's goofy. Hey, guys. Howdy. So, uh, end up getting an 
an inhuman. Nice. And then it's it was actually the it's I mean, power the lords. Oh, power Not lords are inhuman. inhumans. I'm all over the place. Yeah. So um, just Lord totally Karn awesome because you can power. actually turn the whole thing around. You've got different figures, but same guy. Now wait a minute. The the feature doesn't work. It doesn't. I I uh, you, maybe I don't know. You've got to wind them up more. Maybe. Yeah, because yeah. you're supposed to be able to push the button and he spins and he around. around. And then he's and he actually has six fingers. Uh, there's a thumb on each side so you can uh, change That's them around each way. That's the one thing that really always bothered me with those figures is that he has two thumbs. Is it really? I, hey, I like the figure. Uh, we'll see. And there's, there's more to the line. I'll have to find a, maybe a good condition one that, yeah. that does its... Yeah, it does his number. Yeah, it's not going to do it. What else do we got? Oh, there's another, another kaiju from, uh, I believe, Power Rangers. Oh, he's that's dirty. Cool. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give him a bath here. But right. uh, cool. 1994 Bandai. I, I gotta do a little double check if I'm right. I think he's a mole guy, and then he nice. does his action does work. So he's got the. But yeah, as a, as a Power Ranger fan, I love finding these old. That's a great kaiju too. Is this really cool the dude? Digger claws. So uh, yeah, I also grab knee pads. Those are for uh, future customs. Um, more knee pads. A USSR flag, which I'm gonna definitely put with some of my old wrestler nice. guys. Um, and knee pads. A, these are for uh, WWE. Customs? Those are yeah. Those are so. Um, gotcha. I do a lot of the WWE customs mm -hmm. in the Hasbro form. Right. Uh, the, I use the classic Hasbros. So I did just also get this ravishing Rick Rude, <laughs> simply cool. ravishing ropes. I'll probably cut it down a little bit so that it fits onto my yeah. my Rick Rude. Give him a little repaint. Maybe, uh, I think, what was it, Survivor Series 90? No, SummerSlam 90, I think, is when he had the belt painted on his tights. I think yeah, I might end up Summer doing Slam that 90. one with this. So um, the Best Buy of the Con coming up here? And oh, then, oh, no, I got the Best oh, Buys in my hand right here. That's what I'm here. saying, coming so up So this here. is actually a pack, uh, pack of cards for my daughter. She also is really loving the cards. and nice. She's young enough, we're trying to get, like, face recognition stuff, and she loves Picard. So we're going to let her walk, open go. up these and, and show her nuts. How old is she? She's 19 months. 19 months and digging so, Picard, huh? The, the, the quick story she's behind that is years ago, uh, years ago. Well, it was years ago now, I guess. Uh, she was about six months old. We had her in her little bouncer in front of the TV, and I, I was at the end of my rope with whatever thing, baby Einstein's or you yeah. know whatever. I was like, you know what? You're watching. We're watching next gen. I was like, I'm. I can't watch this anymore. So I flip on um, Escape or uh, Encounter at Founder, uh, Encounter at Farpoint. Yeah. Uh, the first two episodes. And it starts, she's bouncing around in the chair and she, you know, bounce up and down, having a good time. And it, you know, the music starts to come in a little bit and space. And it was like someone hit the pause button on her. Wow. And she just, her head went back and she stared at the screen. And the second Patrick Stewart came onto the screen, this was the first time she ever clapped. Really? She just wow. saw him, just, just hands together and I went, what the hell's going That's on here? Cool. So then we just started playing Next Gen, and every time the song comes on, the, the intro, she makes us be quiet. We have wow. to sit there and listen to it, and she rocks back and forth when the thing comes on. Um, Next Gen got me back into Star Trek. I mean, I like amazing, the I like the original Star Trek series. Um, I mean, it was before I was born, but it, there's reruns played all yeah. my, all through my childhood. See, Next Gen was a whole other game, them. though. But then when Next Gen, Next Gen came, I fell in love with that, and watched well, all those and then I went back and refell in love with the original Star Trek so series. With, so with that I think Ron Moore is going to be for me is a big part of that because uh -huh. then he went on to Battlestar Galactica right. and what the hell that show was amazing. Yeah. So um yeah, so her actually her second time clapping was in I want to say season maybe season 3 or season 4, I believe the episode's called Birthright and it's um when Duras finally fights Worf and they get into the bat left battle and they're going yeah. back and forth and Duras is on the ground and his bat left goes to the side and Worf is faced with that moment of what do I do? Like I can let him live as a coward forever yeah. or I'm claiming my birthright back. And he buries that bat left deep yep. in his chest and my daughter stood up. She could barely, really? and, and she stood in this thing and just went, <laughs> I'll never forget that rhythm of clapping because it was like, did it wasn't she just the celebrate? The victory. It was just the violence. It she was, loved the she violence. was into just to Ross, dude. He was done. It was over. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, next gen, man, that, that's been my family. My, wow. my wife loves it. That's um, impressive. It's actually the way with my wife. It's the way I found out that this is my wife. Uh, back when I was really? working at Art Asylum, uh, we had just gotten in. I, um, I did a bunch of molding, a uh, bunch of castings 
for the early, I think it was series one was Riker and uh, Worf was mm -hmm. our first series because it was through DST. So we do like four of each figure and from different phases. Right. And um, I had also had a Cardassian figure I was working on and I put the boots for the Cardassian onto future and perfect Worf and, uh, or no, all good things Worf. And she comes up to me and, and she went, those boots are for the Cardassian. Those are the boots for Worf. And then she, she went, <laughs> and I looked right at her Realized and went, what she had done. you're a nerd. And, she, she had made. and then from that moment, I'm like, that's my wife. She's not a nerd. She's a fashionista. She's a fat, there you go. <laughs> a nerd for fashion. <laughs> so, awesome. uh, yeah, pretty good haul today at this con, man. It was Wait, a small you con. Didn't but you reveal the, the Oh, jeez, I didn't, I didn't reveal it. Okay, so <laughs> this line. Is one of them, uh, it's one of the most sought after old school Happy Meal toys. And when I saw it, I don't think the guy knew what he was selling me. I've never seen it before. I want to find the rest of them now. So this is now, there was a line early on where the, the foods of McDonald's would transform into uh, hot cakes, transformed into something, fries. Uh, there was a Big Mac. There's a few others. This was from the later line in 1990. Mm -hmm. And this one's interesting because, so you push the bottom here and his head's going to pop up. But the head is actually a dinosaur. And then dinosaur ice cream, yum. So yeah, and then the little arms pop out, and you have your little transforming toy. So here we'll get that closer. And I'll take a few. Uh, I'll take a few uh, uh, haul picks, but yeah. So were all Let's, of the the uh, toys from this wave were they dinosaur based? You know, I don't know. I, huh. I really got to go back and look because I vaguely even remember this line. I remember more the original line. Yeah. So uh, and then after I think once I pick all these up, I, I may. Want to start getting they they had the nuggets yeah they uh they did a, a prizes for a while where it'd be a nugget with like superman stuff or batman stuff or like my different stuff favorite mcdonald toy mcdonald's toys ever is when they took when they did the dc dc warner brothers cartoon characters i was just gonna up. say dude I love those with the little bugs bunny superman costumes. is awesome oh. yeah the two-sided costumes that would those. crack I'm, off I, my, the only drawback to them is i wanted them to be articulated but they were still beautifully like, done. These are free awesome. figures. You yeah. got to take it where right. you get it. That's right. They so, awesome. uh, yeah, there's been a few really good lines I, I, that have come out through McDonald's, almost uh -huh. primarily. Although right now, uh, Sonic, I don't know if they're running it now or if it's an old campaign. They just had stuff laying around. Um, we went, uh, my daughter and I went to Sonic, and I picked her up some chicken tenders or whatever. We go play at the park. And we sit down to eat, and it is, they, they go on like sunglasses, like mm -hmm. glasses would, but it's a the ninja turtle bandana across the eyes oh, that's cool. she absolutely loves this that's thing cool. will like it, she goes to bed without it on but the minute she wakes up like i see her looking for it some she eats her meals wear, in it she yeah. eats it. some little girls wear princess dresses when they go out to eat with family no. she wears ninja turtle sunglasses yeah she'll be dressed as star trek figures. she'll be dressed as bailey from the wwe with <laughs> a with a 18 inch uh, plus chewbacca and a three and three quarter inch Captain Picard. Oh, and Daniel Tiger. She nothing, loves Daniel Tiger. Nothing so, better than a baby nerd. Yeah, oh, she's awesome. a hardcore nerd. And to the point where, like, her toy collection's starting to rival <laughs> other people's toy collections. Yeah. So, you know, people, I was, I was on a group recently and they, uh, they said, uh, it's bullshit. Stop saying that you're buying things for your kid when it's really for you. And yeah, I'm going, that's what guys. I thought when you were first saying it. And then I realized the more you talked about it, I was like, no, this is No, really this is kid. what it is, man. Like, this is exactly what it is. She has a Fortress Maximus. Like, it wow. just, look, I ran into a great deal That's on him. I brought it home and unboxed it. She looked and said, that thing's damn near as tall as me and dragged it across the living room. I'm like, well, I guess that's the end of that. Yeah, like, it's hers now. <laughs> so, um, all right, it's been one nerdy day and we had a really great time, learned a lot good of time. stuff and got to talk to a legend, living. Oh, God. The, in, legend. in the back of my element yeah. at that, with all this amazing lighting. With the, with the camera sitting on the hood of my Jeep. <laughs> Legendary Jeep. <laughs> so um, like, share, and subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot of this stuff in the future. We have a few other people we'd like to talk to. Hopefully we can uh, strong arm him into letting us into the Four Horsemen studios. We'll see. Well, Anytime. He's a big dude, so I, don't, I think if I put his arm behind his back, he'd just throw me across the he's room. But we'll see. just got to in advance so we can hide the stuff that you're not allowed to see. Oh, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> look, I'm not calling anybody. We're grappling hooking right to the top. So... Uh, all right, so we are at 5 Live VP on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we are also on Reddit uh, with the username 5 Alive uh, VP. And for our live shows, check out hashtag 5 Alive Live. <laughs> and <laughs> so we have a contest going on with Krizza for the Red River rivalry between Oklahoma and Texas. Texas? Not AM, just Texas? No, yeah. Texas. Okay, so the Longhorns versus the Sooners. And if they lose, uh, Chris is going to come into the show live wearing all Sooner stuff. But some of you guys out nice. there, 
So use the hashtag 5 Live RRR, standing for Red River Rivalry. And um, if you win, if the, your team wins, Chris will wear it. But if not, on her bet, you got to wear some, some Longhorn stuff. Just you throw them up. I don't know. You take your pick. But um, so we have that going on. Also, you want pirate picks to send us? Say you messed up, RRR, 5 Live, ARRR, and send us your pirate photos. Uh, then the other one was, you wanted to stub your toe, you're not feeling so good, hashtag 5 Live A R G H. A R G H, A R G H, A R G H. Now, yeah, just, arr, 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 arr. just full Charlie Brown. Uh, one of the other ones, actually, we're looking to get 100 subscribers. Once we get there, we are going to start giving away some of the stuff that you see us opening on the live shows. We have a lot of boxed items. Uh, we're not giving away my element. Are we giving away your beard? We're not giving away my beard. Come on, Come on guys. Pubic hair. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> well, someone's going to be surprised when I throw a Merkin at him. So, um, yeah, we have a lot of really great stuff, and we're going to give away a good a portion of it once we get to 100 subscribers. So uh, keep liking, subscribing, making comments. And uh, Chris has given me one of these. What do we got? Yeah, we are we are halfway there, right? We're at fifty. We are a young channel, but I nice. have a funny feeling with uh, this guy sitting next to me. We might hit that hundred. Yeah, subscribe, guys. He's gonna end up subscribing, then he's gonna win it. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen. That's what, I better, <laughs> better win something. So, um, can, can I plug a little too? Uh, we got one more plug. Okay. All right. So we have uh, use hash, hashtag Five Live Toy Picks. Uh, take pictures of your collections. Any any pictures of toys that you like, right. submit them. And when we get to that 100 subscribers, we're going to have a little side thing going on. And we're going to look at those pictures. And live, we're going to decide which ones we think are the best. And that'll be our winner. Nice. All right. Good. So let's, let's hit up some plugs. Plug Horseman. Uh, <laughs> Sourcehorseman.com for all things for Horseman related. And right now on Storehorseman.com, we've got our pre-order going for Mythic Legions Coliseum. We've got uh, seven really cool Mythic Legions characters and this big, gigantic Cyclops troll. So go to storehorseman.com to pre-order that now. Uh, it's going until August 18th, I believe. So get in there soon. They'll be gone. I mean, once, once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, it goes pretty quick. Yeah. So I actually, I mean, that said, I really want one of those giant ogres that you guys yeah. made. And, yeah. like, that's a good luck. Like, I, I find them and it's like, I, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want more of these. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, also, hey, guys, if anybody knows where they can find these and they want to send them to Five Alive, yeah. contact Bobby T at Bobby T55555 time. It's five fives. All right, dude, it has Begging been a great time. Begging for toys. These are awesome <laughs> and you know it. All right, hey, we have been Five Alive. I am Bobby T. Martin's over there. Chris is over there. I'm Corn Boy. All right, we will see you next time. All right, guys, we just got here. We are at the firehouse and... Uh, the bridge where I think yeah. we're some stuff's about to happen. <laughs> Anthony Keyes oh. is right behind. <laughs> oh no, but that dude is. Oh jeez. I'm just glad I think, we made it here in one piece. Yeah, it got a little hairy there yeah. for a yeah. second, but uh, I think we need to run into the firehouse because that guy's giving us the eyes. All right, we gotta go. Corn boy, corn boy, this is Mark from Five Alive. Can we have an interview? What the heck, get away from me! Oh. Oh. All right, guys, we are inside of the show and we actually got CB here. And what's funny is you come into a show like this with a guy like this and. You end up at a table like this that's full of his stuff. So no, this is not this, oh, one. not this one. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's this table. Oh, Here we yeah. go. <laughs> I, I got a feeling we're not gonna walk five feet today without seeing some stuff from, from this see. guy over here. Or they uh, not necessarily my choice of the kinds of figures that I would like to do, but it turned out alright. Dude, it's perfect. Sir, you got it. I can't even believe this. You, you just made a 19 month old child for your Oh, excellent. Yes, we got a Star Trek super fan. Me too. All right, hey, thank you very much. Dude, $10. All right, here we go. All right, we are leaving the con. We've got Corn Boy with a pile of toys. A couple of them. Yeah, make sure we don't get hit. Caesar, neck of Caesar that I uh, never picked up for some reason. It was only 10 bucks. That was a good buy. And a Shin Godzilla that was, oh. it's beat all the crap, but all the stuff's there. His head's off the package, but you know, I do this kind of stuff for a living, so I can put it back together. It'll take deal. about two seconds. Yeah, so that's 10 bucks too. That's awesome. And I don't really care for this design. I know that's blasphemy to a lot of you Gar Godzilla and uh, Takeya fans, but I don't really care for this design. I don't like he, how he walks around with his hands up like this. And he yeah. always looks like he's going, instead of, <laughs> but he's the more, 
Yeah, he's a more <laughs> more sad yeah. that he's uh, he's destroying he's, Tokyo. He's a nuclear infested beast. <laughs> <laughs>